How's everybody doing? Wow, that's lacking. Thanks for being here today. Um, I'm Nicole Sullivan. I'm the PM for Google Chrome. And I'm Greg Whitworth. I'm PM for Microsoft Edge, and my Twitter handle is at Greg Whitworth. Yeah, and I'm at Stubbornella. That is, believe it or not, actually the best way to get a hold of me. <laughs> OK, so let's start off by going back in time a bit. Um, do you remember when we were going to get new HTML elements? Who remembers that? Um, I was super excited. Uh, after years of building the same tab set again and again and again, I thought, huzzah, this is it. Um, surely they'll see that this is in every design system ever, and they'll build it into the browser. Then imagine my disappointment when we actually got a side article and section. They're totally fine. They just didn't solve the problems that I was trying to solve. Um, so since then, I've held on to the core belief um, that HTML shouldn't be finished. Design systems have been innovating and lighting the path forward for HTML for a long time. And I think now browsers can pave those cow paths. So and at Microsoft, we completely agree. Uh, on the move from Edge HTML over to Chromium, we did a full inventory of some of the goodness we thought was an Edge HTML and wanted to bring over to Chromium. We reached out to our good friends over at Google, and they completely agreed, because one of the things we wanted to look into that we'll be covering is form controls. Uh, and starting up, we were with accessibility, touch, and uh, ultimately a fresh coat of paint, because when we were looking at them, they were uh, pretty dated, as you'll see. Yeah. Uh, we'll also be covering stylability, extending functionality, and then ultimately, as Nicole was saying, new components. Yeah, and bye bye 1990s <laughs> gradients. Uh. Um, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, so as I noted, like we wanted to have the first round on uh, accessibility, and as we were going through them, we also noted there was a huge need for a look and feel. So we decided to go ahead and tackle both of them and update the look and feel, and their plan for both Mac and Windows. So we specifically wanted the form elements to look like part of a matched set. We were going for beautiful, webby, and neutral. We hope that every design system would see a bit of themselves in the new designs and easily imagine how they might be adapted for their own branding. The progress bar was not so bad. It's a little further along than the others and a little newer. Um, and so we took it as a starting point to uh, move all of the other form controls into the future. So if the progress bar had set the standard, the meter <laughs> needed an upgrade. Super ugly. Um, we're still working out the last little tweaks to get the strokes exactly right, um, but you can check it out on Canary and give us feedback. This is the before, and on the right-hand side is the after. Um, you'll need to enable the Web Platform Control's updated UI flag to see the latest um, in About Flags. So and then, then we have this lovely uh, Windows 95 uh, draggable <laughs> element here in the range, uh, which is definitely in the need of an upgrade. So we gave it a more modern uh, splash coat of paint to flatten it up a little bit. Uh, so hopefully it looks a lot better to you as well. Um, and for uh, Chrome, we decided to experiment with a little bit of a different visual detail. Um, we are showing the selected portion of the range in color. We'd love to know what you think. This is something we're still uh, playing with and trying to figure out what, what works well. So in checkbox and radio, they're small, but they're also really, really impactful. Uh, form controls, they're on almost all of our forms. And while, again, they're subtle changes, those gradients are very, very indicative of the era that they came out. And we've now flattened and modernized them. And hopefully, they fit better in all of your form controls uh, on your websites that you're making. Um, I believe that you lit the path for, path for us here. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, on Chrome, again, we decided to experiment with color for the selected state. Um, so that said, though, we share about 99% of the code for these elements. Um, and so that's going to make the next steps that we're talking about a lot mm. easier. Another, another important aspect as we started off with was accessibility. And, and one of these things is it really doesn't matter about the input modality you're using. You should be able to use the control in a good way. Uh, and touch is one of those things. As you all know, uh, I've been using the Macs over at the, at the booth, and I keep touching the touch screen that isn't there. Um, uh, we have the two-in-one Windows devices, and so like touch is very important to us. Um, and so we increased the hit test regions on, and here's date. Uh, but the thing, the, the control I think that shows this the most is the time element, which as you can see, here's the current Chromium one with those wonderful little tiny spinners that good luck trying to touch those with your fingers. Um, we now have the similar pop-up that we have in like date, and you got the normal like touch scroll carousel type feel. 
uh, to have a good user experience. I mean, honestly, yeah, right? <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I mean, I think that those spinners were actually pretty hard to click with a mouse, too. I'd be like, oh, no, here. I made it go down. <laughs> Same here. So to, to carry on the accessibility uh, notion, like, I love this graphic because we really try to make it so that it were inclusive design from the start. My friends at Google feel the exact same way. Uh, because of the fact it doesn't matter whether you're blind, you're driving a car, you, you're only able to use one arm, you're holding a baby, a cup of coffee, you're using a mouse, keyboard, touch, or pen, Everyone benefits from making your stuff inclusive. One aspect of great accessibility is keyboard accessibility. Yeah, and the previous Chromium color picker um, didn't have keyboard access to all parts of the control. Um, in particular, the color well wasn't accessible. And this one here is showing the beautiful Windows Isn't color it pretty? control here. <laughs> uh, but it's also the keyboard navigation thing is actually true also of the uh, Apple a native one as well, but we went ahead and did all the keyboard support that any user would expect. So if you're navigating this with a keyboard, everything works, including the color well. And we also have a keyboard modifier keys that if you use control or command, you jump 10 color values so that you also get the same speed and intuitiveness uh, that you would with a mouse rather than just having to go every single pixel value, which would be really annoying and monotonous. And this is the kind of thought that Greg's team really puts into these things because it would be super annoying to have to go color by color by color by a keyboard, right? And so being Very able annoying. to make that 10 pixel jump is great. Uh, so Edge also had high contrast support. It's something we, we value. And while uh, one, one misnomer also is it's called high contrast, but it's actually like a color theme a user can set because people actually do set low contrasts as well. Um, in different scenarios, but here we're showing that these now in Chromium work by default. Uh, here's a few of them uh, working in high contrast mode. Um, and we, we went ahead and brought this uh, into Chromium. And then also to give you all better control of this, because at times you all have better context, we went about doing the standards work, and this is now behind a flag in any Chromium browser, uh, forced colors. And that lets you know, this is similar to the MS Prefix one we had in Edge, but this lets you know when somebody is in this state, whether it's active or not. Because ultimately, you do have more context than we do. And while the defaults are great in probably 99.9% .9 of the scenarios that we've seen across the web, you also have more context. So you can go ahead and turn this off and provide better, better scenarios. And the old, does everybody remember system colors from way back in the day? <laughs> CSS system colors like Windows. OK, cool. All right, a few of us. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah, so th those are actually being brought back. And some are being added in because those system colors are now being adjusted so that you can use them uh, in here to provide, again, a better experience for your users in the context that you have, but also understand they work great out of the box. Um, I would like to just take a moment and acknowledge that the Edge engineers have landed 36 commits in the core of Chromium that improves the accessibility of the form controls. That's off to the team back in Redmond. This is going to make a real difference to users every day and make it easier for web developers to build things that everybody can use. So. The next phase, uh, I'm sure none of you have ever had any issues with styling form controls, uh, is styleability. <laughs> um, and so we wanted to dig into this because as we were working on this, uh, we noticed you know, the usage could be higher and we kind of want to understand that. So like, we wanted to look at styleability and we wanted to potentially make it so you can style the dumb things without hacks. <laughs> so ultimately, this is what it comes down to. And hopefully you heard in Yov and Chris's uh, talk that we want to build stuff you use. Like, uh, we don't spend all these days doing this stuff for you all to like throw it all away. And currently, form elements are not used nearly as much as they, they could be. And so we want to understand why. So we started doing customer interviews and research. I love this quote from a web developer. Love on... the slash hate, right? Because yeah, it's sort of horrible. For sure, horrible. for sure. Now, now it's also noted uh, when we do prioritization, it's important to uh, look for emotion and I actually got a lot of comments that I can't put on the screen that also show how terrible. <laughs> Turns uh, out y'all hate form elements. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad. But anyways, it says right now it is often easier to build form controls from scratch than it is to modify the style of the controls themselves, which ultimately is just terrible. So why not just create form elements from scratch? Um, do you know how many times I've built that tab set in my career? I couldn't even count. That work was duplicated over and over and over again in different companies. And even within a company, there would be separate design systems. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Too many to count. Yeah. How many did you find at Microsoft? Uh, so far, seven. Seven. 
<laughs> so, so far. And that's just internal to Microsoft. Um, so even when you manage to get a, a tab set or a form control that, that works really well, they often have an uncanny valley feel where they match the operating system in the browser that you're most comfortable with and feel just a little bit off everywhere else. Um, there's also something that happens around accessibility where you try and you do your best and you add the ARIA roles, but will every developer that comes after remember to add that ARIA role? So, okay, this is uh, we, audience participation time. So <laughs> this is, we're going to just do a quick survey to kind of just get a feel for the room. So everybody put a hand up in the air. Oh, oh come on. Put a hand up in the air. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, this will be quick if everybody keeps their hand down. And so when I say, basically, it's true or false, when I say something that is not true for you in your day-to-day -day web projects, put your hand down and keep it down. So you test your website with a mouse. OK, that's good. Yeah. You test in more than one browser. All right, cool. I'm glad you stayed up for that one. <laughs> you test in more than one operating system. OK, that's kind of what I figure. I appreciate the honesty. Truly, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> You test on more than one operating system and in more than one browser on those different operating systems. OK, I appreciate the honesty still. OK, so you test touch. OK, you do accessibility. That was a lot. That was a lot. I wasn't expecting touch to be the one that got everybody. This is why this is great. Sorry for everybody that still has your hands up and we're talking. Your arms are getting tired. Uh, you test touch. We already did that one. You do accessibility testing. OK, you do accessibility testing of Chrome. Accessibility testing of Firefox. Accessibility testing of Safari. Accessibility testing of Edge. Samsung Internet. Yeah. Okay, okay. There was hold. that one person out there oh, who oh, had oh. their hand up until. I still have like six more questions, okay. though. <laughs> so I'll just rattle them through, but you kind of get the point. But like, did you test Windows High Contrast? Did you test keyboard? Did you test assistive technologies? And then I even get into the specific ATs that oh, we also Oh, say them test. at least. Oh, OK. Yeah. So VoiceOver, NVDA, JAWS, Narrator. Um, so like by the then testing matrix is massive here. And, and that's kind of the point, like ultimately I'm trying to get across is I actually don't fault you, all of you that put your hands down. Personally, I feel like this is our fault. Like, we enabled this bad thing because you want to style a select element. You go rebuild it all, and then understandably can't. You have engineering realities just as we do, and you can't put in the time that we do. And then in addition to that, like I listed all those ATs, we have great relationships with them. So when we find issues in those ATs or they find issues with us, we talk about it, we fix it. And unfortunately, that's just not something that scales. So ultimately, we want to try to fix this problem. So we wanted to understand why form elements are recreated as sort of a starting point for understanding what we could do differently. Um, the top 10 form controls that are recreated by web developers are here on the screen. The top one is select. Shocker. <laughs> yeah, I think we all saw that one coming. Uh, checkbox, radio, uh, sorry, date, radio, and file, and then a few others that are, that are used as well. Um, so then, obviously, we asked the question, why do developers recreate the form controls? Um, and you really couldn't have been more clear. 36.6% um, of you are recreating form controls just because you want to change the style. Um, and I think we both see that as a huge opportunity to give you something that you need. Um, another 31.6% are uh, doing it in order to add functionality. Um, and then 27.3% are doing it to overcome browser inconsistencies. So we feel like there's a lot we can help with there. Mm -hmm. So we heard you. <laughs> uh, honestly, I think it's something we've all kind of known. But ultimately, styling of form controls sucks on the web. So we're going to start focusing and digging into the select first, then checkbox radio and those other top controls uh, that we referenced earlier. Can you imagine being able to style the select? How good would that be? I, that would be I, amazing. I can imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we'll talk about extending uh, functionality of these elements. Um, so normalized values are really painful for frameworks. Um, we got a bunch of code pens from the React DOM team. It turns out that three dot is not equal to three. And so when the browser normalizes those values, often something is lost um, in the mix. And so we started looking into raw value and other solutions for um, preserving the characters typed by the user. We want controls to also work for frameworks. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have the end solution there, but we're looking at it. 
Um, we also asked you which form elements give you the most uh, frustration, and you really couldn't have been more clear. You kind of hate the select element. You hate it, yeah. 42.7% are the most frustrated with the select control. Let's just see how many people here would put select at the top of their list. Y yep, I think it that's even like more. It feels like a little bit higher than 40. Yeah, that yeah. does. <laughs> Thank you. OK, we'll update that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, and the date picker, you don't like the date picker either. That's 17.3% of folks. Um, and file is another popular one, and 9.3%. And finally, checkbox and radio elements. So since the select was by far the winner of being the worst, um, we decided to dig into that. We did another survey that had a bunch of different questions that started digging into use cases and everything about the select. Um, Greg's team will do surveys about select. Just select. It's kind of amazing. It, it, it's very useful because ultimately we ended up having a bunch of questions that ended up in these various buckets. And so overwhelmingly, styling is the largest pain point that we should go try to tackle first. Then behavior and extensibility and content adjustments. One aspect I would like to call out, again, why we had the individual questions, because earlier we were talking about, oh, do you want to extend them? And a lot of people said that. But when we were digging into the select, because each control has a different meaning of extensibility, um, the select, the number one, if you take out just the top issue that people had in this bucket, which is being able to provide a good user experience while searching the select. Um, if you take that out, it, this is like a non-existent, doesn't even show up on the chart. So like, to me, that, that is the thing that we would go pick out of that bucket to go solve. It isn't trying to solve an entire component model because of that. And then content adjustments. Who here has wanted to put an icon in an option element? Me. <laughs> Good gracious, come on, we should, should be, be able to do that. So hopefully as we dig into uh, the select, we'll focus first on styling and then be able to insert an icon into an option. More than that, but I'm just saying non-text based content. So that's what we'll be tackling with the next generation of select. I'm super stoked to get started working on it. Um, and we'll be telling you how we'll, we'll be uh, investigating that in a minute. And hopefully be able to put arbitrary HTML in a select element. Exactly, that's going to be, be awesome. Sort of awesome. Um, so we've talked about uh, the first three phases of this project, um, and now we also heard that you would like some new components, and so we'd like to talk about that. Um, the most requested native controls are virtual list and toggle switch. Uh, Chrome is working on both of those. Woo Yay. Um, so virtual scrollers, the most requested new component. In fact, Pete Hunt reminds us every year since 2015 <laughs> that he still doesn't have a UI table view. Thank you, Pete. Please keep asking. <laughs> um, he, it looks like he forgot in 2018. I think um, it's because he was just so mad. Maybe, he was like, I'm, I'm done. Maybe. Um, so he rightly says that UI table view is the foundation for all apps with a feed. Um, I'd count e-commerce. If you have a lot of products, that's basically the same thing. Even something with long amounts of content like Wikipedia. Um, so the need is clearly there, but I want to be honest, this is a really hard problem to do well in the browser. Um, so we're creating prototypes, trying things out, and trying to find the best possible solution. Um, one of our virtual scroller prototypes is showing promise um, for scroll performance improvements um, using a new platform primitive called display locking. Display locking is available in Orange Origin Trial right now. Um, and it allows, it unlocks a lot of uh, different features. It allows you to batch rendering updates to avoid paying the performance costs for, yeah, for, it's, it's really good for large amounts of DOM. Um, it also uh, means that locked um, subtrees are not uh, rendered immediately, which means you can keep more stuff in the DOM. Um, that's great because it becomes searchable both by find and page as well as by assistive technologies. Mm. Um, so let's be clear, this isn't UI table view. I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> I hope we'll get there. Um, but it is definitely a step in that direction. Um, it's an origin trial right now. Please, we'd love your feedback. Um, we've also been working on the toggle switch, which allows developers to semantically express the on-off state. Um, we started out with a ton of research into how other design systems handle toggle behavior. Um, we coded a prototype. You can try it. It's on GitHub. And we used it to drive out new low-level APIs and better accessibility. So three low-level APIs and improvements in particular are form-associated custom elements, uh, custom element accessibility, and focusable custom elements. So We've covered all these wonderful aspects. Hopefully, you've enjoyed all of them. The accessibility touch and the visual refresh are those wonderful 95 era 
uh, controls, the styleability. Yes, let's be able to style a select and a radio element, for goodness sakes. Uh, extending the functionality and the new components that uh, Nicole just referenced. And now we'd like to ask for your help. Please. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to be honest, it is really hard to standardize high-level components. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of moving parts. Um, it's frankly easier to get agreement on something like display locking than it is to get agreement on something like a virtual scroller or mm -hmm. a higher level component. Um, so what we need is for you to get involved, for you to let us know if this is something you want and how much you want it, to let us know uh, which components you think is, would be missing and that you would use in your design systems. And so to that end, we've been meeting, as I, as I noted earlier, with many different design systems frameworks uh, across the industry, doing customer interviews with them uh, to better clarify some of those survey questions we had, get into the nitty gritty, get into what we can offer them that they would use in their design systems across some of the largest companies and web properties uh, on the web. Um, if you happen to work with a on a design system or framework, please get in touch with us. We're more than happy to chat. Ionic, in particular, has been really helpful in identifying mm -hmm. gaps and suggesting solutions. Huge shout out to them. Yes, definitely. So I'm, I'm very excited about this because, as she noted, it's very hard to standardize high-level components and controls. Uh, so, but in order to do that, we need to bring, as we noted, the design system people that work on controls and components every single day together with the platform engineers that can hopefully make those become a reality built in natively. And so we started it's in its infancy in the YCG, as you heard Yov and Chris talking about earlier. Um, it's something called OpenUI. And basically, it's a bunch of uh, Microsoft design system teams are coming together to help solve the same problem. Do you want to jump to the next slide? <laughs> Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's OK. It's OK. So openui.org, it's where we're beginning. It's a, like, we're in Silicon Valley. If you want to get on the ground floor, <laughs> this is going to be a big deal. So like, <laughs> you can get in here, help us out. Uh, it's go add your own design system, your own design component. We're trying to really use what the industry has already been using the design systems. I mean, you worked on them for years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> been doing this forever. And so we're trying to actually just take the cup as you already have created and try to go pave them. So go there. Uh, start the GitHub uh, issue. We'll be keeping you posted on research and getting your feedback as well as platform APIs we want your feedback on, such as display locking. Mm -hmm. Finally, submit bugs. Uh, we want these form controls to meet your needs. Uh, whether you're a designer, framework author, or maintain a design system, we'd love to hear about anywhere that there are gaps. Um, and I know. I remember being intimidated when I submitted my first browser bug. And I was like, oh no, is it going to turn out to actually not be a bug? And I sure. just didn't understand. Um, but I do want to say that both PMs and engineers really welcome your input. It's mm. a huge signal in deciding what we work on and what gets attention. Um, so if you see bugs when we release in a little while uh, <laughs> these, um, these components, let us know, and, and we'd love to hear about that. Also, star the ones if you find them. Yeah, star the ones that you really yeah, want. That's super helpful. Um, again, Stubbornella on Twitter. Please get in touch. And, and, and Greg Lower, thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>